Web 2 and Web 3, understanding the differences and making your first steps into Web 3. The World Wide Web, WWW, has come a long way since its creation in 1989. The evolution of the web can be divided into different eras, each with its own unique characteristics and features. The first era, known as Web 1, was characterized by simple static web pages with limited interactivity. The second era, Web 2, saw the rise of dynamic websites, social media platforms, and user-generated content. Today, we are entering the third era of the web, known as Web 3. What is Web 2? Web 2 is the era of the web that started in the late 1990s and early 2000s and lasted until the late 2010s. During this time, the web became more interactive and social, allowing users to create and share content, communicate with others, and participate in online communities. Key Characteristics of Web 2 the evolution of the web from Web 1 to Web 2 was marked by a number of significant changes that greatly impacted the way we use the internet today. One of the key developments of Web 2 was the rise of dynamic websites. These websites were designed to provide a more engaging and interactive experience for users by allowing for real-time updates and providing more dynamic content. This was a stark contrast to the static, text-based websites that dominated the early days of the web. Another major change brought about by Web2 was the rise of user-generated content. Social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube allowed users to easily create and share their own content, leading to an explosion of user-generated content online. This transformed the internet from a place where information was primarily consumed to a place where it was also created and shared. One of the biggest changes brought about by Web2 was the centralization of data. In Web 2, data was stored on large centralized servers controlled by a few big companies such as Google, Facebook, and Amazon. This centralization of data allowed these companies to control the flow of information and make it easier to collect and analyze data on their users. While this centralization provided benefits in terms of ease of use and the ability to collect and analyze large amounts of data, it also raised concerns about privacy and the potential for misuse of this data. What is Web3? Web3 is a new kind of internet service that will revolutionize the way we interact with the digital world. It's characterized by decentralized systems and technologies like blockchain, peer-to-peer -peer networks, and smart contracts. One of the most important features of Web3 is the use of decentralized systems. Unlike the current internet, which is controlled by a few big companies, Web3 is built on a decentralized network. This means that there is no single point of control or ownership and the power is distributed among all the users of the network. Blockchain is one of the key technologies that makes Web3 possible. It's a kind of digital ledger that records transactions in a secure and transparent way. With blockchain, users can interact with each other directly without the need for intermediaries. Smart contracts are another important component of Web3. They're self-executing contracts with the terms of the agreement between buyer and seller being directly written into the lines of the code. This means that the contract is enforced automatically without the need for a middleman or third party. With Web3, users can access decentralized applications that run on the decentralized network. These applications provide a range of services from financial transactions to social networks without the need for a centralized authority. Making your first steps into Web3. It's important to do your own research and understand the risks involved before making any investments. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on the latest developments in the Web3 space and follow influencers and thought leaders in the field. Build your own decentralized application. If you have a background in programming or an idea for a decentralized application, you can start by building your own DAP. There are many tutorials and resources available online to help you get started, and you can also join online communities and forums to connect with others and get feedback on your project. Join a Web3 Accelerator program. Another way to get involved and learn about Web3 is to join a Web3 Accelerator program. 
these programs provide support, mentorship, and funding to help startups and individuals build decentralized applications and projects. Contribute to Web3 open source projects. If you have a technical background and want to contribute to the Web3 community, you can get involved with open source projects. You can find a variety of projects on websites such as GitHub, and many of these projects are looking for developers, designers, and other contributors to help build and improve their platforms. Finally, it's important to remember that Web3 is still in its early stages and there are many challenges and obstacles to overcome. However, the potential benefits of this new era of the web are immense, and there are many opportunities for individuals and organizations to get involved and help shape its future. Whether you're a developer, an investor, or just someone who is passionate about technology and the future of the web, there's a role for you in the Web3 ecosystem. In conclusion, Web3 is the next era of the web, characterized by decentralization, interoperability, and empowering users. While it is still in its early stages, there are already many ways to get involved and start exploring the exciting potential of Web3. By learning about the underlying technologies, trying out decentralized apps, participating in the Web3 community, and investing in Web3 technologies, you can be part of shaping the future of the Web3. As Web3 ecosystem continues to grow and evolve, it is an exciting time to be involved and help shape the direction of the new era of the web. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to notify you of my future videos. And as always, this is not financial advice. I do not give financial advice. Do your own research. I just like to talk about crypto.